welcome to our channel, Orvi the Bus. So a little tip you'll see me do right there is I'm taking my, my strips here, marking the center. So that way I know the center, we've got the center rib of the bus. And then I'll put it up here and you, I'll do it, I'll just do it like this with my line. I go, I mark it up to the center of the rib. I go this way on it so that I can position my drill bit to go into the center rib of you know the center of the center of this tube the stainless steel uh, framing tube i get my drill started and then you'll see me position this way why do i do that because the strip is blocking all of the hot crud the chips that are coming off of here yeah i should be wearing safety glasses uh, but the strip is going to deflect them off to the sides and that way it doesn't go on my head, doesn't go down my shirt. Uh, you know, when, when you're drilling, those, those little chips get pretty hot and they'll, they'll land on you. I had land, one land uh, like in the crease of my elbow uh, a couple weeks ago and I uh, had a pretty nasty burn. I still have like a little red mark right there. And so, uh, you know, safety first. So keep this stuff out of your eyes and uh, that way you can continue to make the rest of your bus and maybe more buses because you can't do it with uh, no eyeballs. But you could, but uh, it would be, be a little difficult. So and I'll take my tapping screw. I'll just kind of put it into my strip here. And I just kind of poke the tip of it out, the little self-tappy part, get myself lined up. And I can put that little tip into the hole. And impact it in. You want to make sure you're sinking the head of your screw down into the material. And that way, when you go to put your ceiling on, uh, you're not dealing with all the little bumps of all your screws. I've gone ahead and cut myself a 12 inch piece and I'm using that as my spacing guide for all of this. You want to use it on every single piece, these strips. This is, this is junk wood guys, right? Like this, this stuff isn't meant to be pretty. Um, a lot of it is, has a lot of bend kinks. It's got a lot of knots. And so on every piece, uh, you want to make sure that you're you're nice and straight because you might have started off straight at strip number one and by the time you get to strip number 20 your your work is slowly drifting off course uh, make sure everything is straight that's going to help you later on when you go to attach your ceiling that you know exactly where those strips are so that when you're shooting your nails up into the ceiling 
or screws or whatever you're doing, uh, you're right on target. So. This is also really hard work. Um, these things are not very heavy, but you're doing everything above your head. You know, these guys aren't light. This over my head for an hour, this is gonna suck tomorrow. I'm gonna feel it. Uh, also, you gotta, you gotta push your drill bit through this stainless. It is not easy. And then you gotta push your impact to impact that screw up in there. If you don't, you're, you're pre-drill, you're just gonna strip that hole out and then your strip will never get tight. And this top one is crucial. This one pretty much sucks the whole board, uh, the whole strip up into this curve. You don't want to strip that out. Otherwise you're going to have to drill yourself a new hole. That one strip is going to be 12 and a half inches off and then your whole build's going to be all kind of funky. Um, so you want to be pushing, make sure you're getting your impact screw in nice and tight and uh, don't over tighten. You don't want to impact to the moon. A, you might strip out your hole. B, you know, if you got a nice tight grip on those threads, it, it'll just impact the screw right through your strip and then and then you got nothing you gotta start all over again i'm going on the side here i'm gonna make sure i'm nice and straight just like that i'm gonna look to the side that way i can get myself nice and straight on that piece i'm gonna rotate get it out of my eyeballs push it's that easy repeat 500 times all right, so we've got the start of our furring strips for the ceiling put in. The next thing I'm gonna start doing is getting ready to put the insulation in between these. But before I do that, there's some things that we need. A, we're gonna have a 12 volt LED lighting in our bus. Now, putting these out 12, 12 inches apart, one foot apart, uh, makes it really easy for us to line all of this up, right? We just need to plan out where the lights go. So what I'm kind of thinking is, is we'll probably put a light just about in the middle, skip two in the middle, skip two in the middle. So that, that'll suffice for our lights and we'll do that on each side. And then we'll also do one in the row, in the center. The reasoning for that is we want to have each section of the bus on a separate circuit. And what that will allow us to do with a nicely programmed control panel is to only turn on the kitchen, to only turn on the living area. And the other thing that we want is the center row to be on a separate circuit in each section so that we can tie all of the center rows together as well. And that way, when you get onto the, when you enter the bus and you just wanna walk from the front to the back, you can turn on the center row and that will illuminate just the walking area and not the entire bus turning on. So in each section, what I'll basically do is I will I will say that this pillar, or actually we'll go to about here, right? Because our cabinet, so the way that our cabinets are planning out is we're going to have a 24 inch um, drawered cabinet. Then we're going to have a 30 inch for a sink. We're gonna do a 15 for, I believe it's uh, like silverware and storage. Then we're going to have a 24 inch for the dishwasher. Yes, we are going to have a dishwasher. Um, two reasons for that. A, I hate doing dishes. B, uh, water efficiency. Dishwashers only use a couple gallons of water. Now, when you do dishes in a sink, now this is going to, everybody's going to argue about this. Oh, I can do dishes and blah, blah, blah. Um, when you only have 90 gallons of fresh and that needs to, you know, if we're boondocking somewhere and that needs to work for our showers and our sink and cleaning and this and that and, and possibly drinking, I'm not sure. I'm kind of on the fence as far as drinking out of the fresh water tank. Yeah, it's clean. Yeah, we have a filter. Probably just do bottled waters in the uh, refrigerator. Anyways, 
Uh, I just feel like the dishwasher is going to be more efficient. We can just run the dishwasher and we can go and do our stuff. It's less time that we're doing cleaning and preparing and getting ready to go and do something fun. Just throw the dishes in the dishwasher, hit the button. It's cleaner, yada, yada, yada. After the dishwasher, that will then have a second 15 inch three drawer um, <coughs> base cabinet. And that should put us to about here. And I believe with our measurements, we should have about 14 feet forward to that front right there of the bus. So we'll have 14 feet. On this side, we have a refrigerator. We're going to be doing a 15 inch cabinet, a 30 for the cooktop and, and storage underneath, and then another 15. So it's a little bit shorter and that'll give us room for our nice big uh, couch sofa thing that we bought. And we'll, I believe there's about a foot and a half little gap in between there. So who knows what we can put in there. Dana will probably find something to put in there. Plant, I don't know. So that'll put us right at about this beam, this guy right here, as far as the room divider. So this side will be the kitchen, this side will be the living room. So what we need to do is we need to run wires for two lights. And so what we can do is we can run to here, daisy chain, and run to there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to run a small wire, or 12 volt. I believe it's 16 gauge. It's, it's overkill. The, the LED lights hardly take any wattage amperage. It's so overkill for the for the lighting system, but it's better safe than sorry, right? So we're going to come out of this hole and we're going to come this way and I'm going to use these kind of beams as where the lights will go. Maybe, maybe in the middle. So I'll go to like the middle, the middle here, and then we'll go the center beam. And then we'll go to the middle on that side. Now, I don't necessarily need a light over the over the refrigerator. That would be kind of pointless. But I feel like it would look kind of weird without one there. So maybe I'll just run the wires. And then if we feel like it doesn't look right, we can just have the wires up inside the bus. Cap them off. But anyways, I don't want to run two wires out of this hole and come across and that's just that's just a waste and so what we're going to do is we're going to come out of this hole right and we're going to make a loop and then we're going to go over to that side and that, what that loop allows me to do is i can then cut it attach it to my light on both sides and that way it comes in goes to the light jumps to the next so that will cut down on our on, on like waste of as far as the wiring goes so then we'll so we'll do all of that. We'll need another separate one for the centers. And so that's what I'm going to do. The next the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm getting close to this hole here and I'm going to run we have our uh, 20 amp wire down there. We're going to go ahead and run our 20 amp to here and that way we can hook that up and we'll leave a nice nice loop of it here as extra. So we'll run our 20 amp down and get everything uh, nice and ran. And then we can start putting in our insulation and now that'll look pretty cool. So that's what I'm gonna do.
All right, so we've done a little bit of wiring. We've got our wires all taped up. They're nice and in the center of all of these runs. So realistically, anything that gets attached to the ceiling is going to go into the furring strips. And all of our wiring is far away from that, minus the center. So the way that we have it is, um, it comes in on that corner. So we have a little wire run down the sides of the bus. It goes across, makes a loop. Once we put our ceiling in, I can cut this attach our wires so it, it goes onto this light here and then we'll run over to this side we cut that put the light it's going to go over to this one cut here it's going to go to this one so basically that run is for the side lights and then we have a run down the center here for the three lights in the middle and that's on a separate run now it's so all go to a controller, a little Arduino controller, and that Arduino controller, when you hit the button, or we can also use a uh, little web interface on our phones or like an iPad that's located here in the bus. So when you, when you want to turn on the kitchen, what it will do is it will turn on this circuit and the center circuit. And then when you turn it off, it'll turn both of them off. Then if you want to call the center row, it will just turn on this circuit and the center row circuit for this and the center row for the bathroom. And so that's how we're, that's how we're approaching the lighting wiring in the bus. Just a little catch up. So you can see we've got our furring strips, we've got our insulation, it is glued to the ceiling, taped so that we don't get squeaky noises. We've got more furring strips with more tape, more loops. We've got our center sections. We've got our 20 amp here for our air conditioner. We are ready to rock and roll. I am going to finish, hopefully tonight, putting the rest of the insulation up and that will call it a weekend. That was a lot of work. It's basically all the ceiling wiring of the bus, all the furring strips, all the insulation. I've put this on the side. I've caulked it. I've attached those. Uh, we've got the, I had to take the shower out, unfortunately. It's gonna get a little dark. Uh, I had to take the shower out because I needed to get back in here for wiring. And also I'm going to add some insulation and kind of support for that back wall. Uh, I've, I've kind of gotten some feedback. I contacted Delta on what to do and they suggest a piece of plywood with spray foam or something or adhesive uh, just to give it a little bit more. We've got our wiring and furring strips back here, but I can't put everything back together yet. I need to get more wood for this crown here this crown in the back bedroom. Uh, I'll have to do the furring strips and wiring back here. And at that point, I think most of the furring strips and insulation and the ceiling should be complete. We need to get to filling all the holes and sanding and get to priming. And at that point, we're ready to spray and get some color on these walls. And by color, I mean just regular white. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all your views. I love reading the comments. That This video is a little bit more hands-on of showing what I'm doing and not just talking about it. Uh, I tried to give some clips, etc. It's a slippery slope. I am not a professional bus builder by any means. And a lot of people give constructive feedback, and then we have a lot of negative Nancys. You know, there is not one way to do this. Everybody kind of has their own uh, spiel and their own method and their own, this is the best way to do it because I did mine that way and I just happened to not have problems. And that's great. This is how we're doing it. Just kind of on an ending note, 
you know, like I said, I am not a professional bus builder by any means. I have basic tools. You'll see me. I've got, you know, I've got Milwaukee stuff. I've got a shop back. I don't have a big shop. We're not we're not in a big giant garage. You know, I, I've got my table saw and my miter saw out there. There's a ton of information out there in Facebook groups and and some a real good resource is is, is the school bus conversions. You know, those guys will do just about anything to uh, renovate a, uh, a bus and a frame and all that. And they really get hands on. There's some people out there who really do a great job at illustrating how to do wiring and electrical and a really a lot of good ideas as far as how to rig the bus, a lot of innovation and some backyard mechanic type stuff, you know, you'll see 55 gallon plastic drums as water tanks, etc. And, you know, whatever works, man. Like, you know, I, I don't, I don't claim to be any professional by any means. But, um, you know, the, I, I hope those of you who might be watching this who don't have a bus of your own or might be thinking about doing one. This, this doesn't take anything special. I, I am a nobody in this, you know. Just, I just hope that this kind of, you know, entices you to, to get out there and, and get a bus and how we've shared our story and we went and we looked at a trailer and etc. And, you know, this, this is our journey. So on that note, thanks for watching. Have a great night.